All right, so I'm basically in the final stages of this project uh, video just to give you a brief overview of doing a multi-track recording. So uh, just to quickly review in this last video, uh, we started by adding one solo track as a click track. We recorded a metronome um, just uh, acoustically through the microphone and the, the, my, my phone was the, the metronome. Um, and then we recorded the guitar track, the ukulele track, and the uh, vocal track. So we're at the, va the last stage of um, mixing down this audio. Now, unfortunately, because of my, re my recording setup, I'm trying to do a screen capture. I've got several audio sound cards going to capture sound and have it going at the same time. So I can't hear what this sounds like in stereo. I'm, I can only hear it in mono, mono the, the way I have it set up. Um, but hopefully this is gonna come out in the recording when you hear it in stereo. So anyways, that, that's, uh, I had panned the, um, the left, ch uh, the guitar half notes in the left channel more, and then the right, uh, is the ukulele rhythm pattern strumming. Um, so let's talk about what, when we want to do first, uh, before we start mixing, okay, we're going to mute the, uh, click track, obviously, we don't want that. I mean, we could delete that altogether, but we can just mute it and then shrink it down. Um, and then we want to solo each of these tracks and, and do what's called gain staging. So gain staging is basically where we make sure that the volume levels are all kind of um, playing back at the same level in this range here uh, on the uh, meters, um, just to make sure that it's um, where we want to start with it, because we can use envelopes to change the volume levels. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that just to bring some things out and pu pull some, some other things back. I'm not going to do any uh, effects. I'm not going to add reverb. I'm not going to do anything like that uh, because this is just basically recording a sound and, uh, and getting a good quality recording. Uh, and that's all I want to do with this. So uh, let's see. Gain staging. So I'm going to play back the sound. I've soloed this one track, the guitar half notes. Now you can see that the um, because I have it panned, we have the readout is going louder on one channel and less on the uh, less on the other channel. If I put it to the middle, then it it comes out even. Okay. okay. And we can see it's averaging about that little point where I put the mouse. Okay, which is pretty good. It's not going up into the red ever. We don't want that. Um, so the gain is set pretty well. Uh, so we'll do the same thing with this next track. We'll solo that. It automatically muted the other tracks. Okay, now we can see right here, there's some really, really loud, spiky parts of the audio. So we'll probably have to pull the gain down on this to make it match the uh, guitar gain at this time based on how I recorded things. And I'll go ahead and pan that to the center right now. And that, the game looks actually pretty good. I'm worried about this little spike right here. Okay, so that was actually pretty good. And if I just listen to those two together, I'm not, let's see. Yeah, unfortunately in Audacity you can't solo, you can only solo one track at a time, which kind of is the whole point of calling it a solo button. But uh, sometimes you want to actually hear a couple of things together. So what are we going to do? We're going to mute that. No, I want to unmute these two. Yeah. There we go. So I've just muted the vocal track just to hear the balance between those two parts. Come on now. Okay, so the balance is pretty good between those two parts. 
um, I'm going to do the panning thing, and I'm just going to go 80% left with the guitar and 80% right with the ukulele. Uh, again, I can't hear what this sounds like in the headphones. It's all mono to my ears because of my recording setup, but hopefully you can hear that in your recording. And I would imagine that the guitar now sounds a little bit loud due to the... Um, panning so I'm gonna pull that down just a little bit I'm guessing from previous experience if I wasn't recording video I would actually be able to hear this so I'm gonna use the envelope tool and just bring the entire guitar envelope down just a bit yeah and now I can see visually that the there's kind of a back and forth between the ukulele and the guitar part, so visually it looks to me like it's a good balance. Uh, I, again, I can't hear it in, in what it actually sounds like in the stereo field, but it sounds a little bit better to my ears with the mono mix, and um, and it looks good on the meter right there. And I I know there are a lot of uh, professional mixers that always talk about you know one of the things you should definitely check when you are mixing is to use um, a mono mix. To check the balance because you know there are cases where somebody might be listening on their phone and it, it may only be a mono speaker um, and if you do mix in mono uh, or check with your mixes in mono you can really definitely hear if you've got a good solid mix uh, stereo um, sometimes can hide little things that are getting buried or uh, some things that may be too loud because when you hear it in the mono field it's like oh that really sticks out because it's too high in both sides so there, there is some benefit to actually only hearing something in mono but I would not normally want to mix this way altogether okay so now I'm gonna unmute the um, vocal track and add that to the mix and again I'm gonna be mixing more visually than from my oral uh, mixing. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. All right, now my voice sounds a little too strong. Uh, I don't like to hear the sound of my own voice singing, so I tend to probably put it low and lower in the mix than is probably desirable. But that's just my personal uh, uh, preference. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Oh, you can't change the envelope while it's playing. That's interesting. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Okay, now to me that sounds pretty good, but I know that, like I said, my personal preference is to have the my own vocals lower than the instruments, so I know I need to probably pull it up so that it sounds acceptable at a normal volume level. I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. Yeah, so I, that probably sounds pretty good overall in, you know, again, not the qualities per se, but the mix anyways. I, obviously, my I'm not a vocalist or a guitarist or ukuleleist, so uh, those are all limited factors in my performance but uh, hopefully overall you get the idea that uh, we, we were able to record multiple tracks and get a decent mix um, through audacity now obviously if I was going to professionally record this and produce this and put this out and release it to the world in a um, yeah you know, like a, like on an album or a CD through Spotify or something uh, I would definitely use different software I, I don't think uh, audacity is capable of actually doing professional quality stuff uh, at that highest level but it is good at doing basic stuff um, and you know recording a single track like this at a time it's 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 fine it does a good job recording is not the problem uh, mixing mastering uh, the effects and handling all that other stuff that that's really where the uh, paid software comes in I know Reaper is, is a popular one and I think it's like sixty dollars if you're not a professional so it's actually a good value but um, as far as free for just a basic project uh, audacity is is really fine at doing these type of things you can do multiple tracks you can create these envelopes and, uh, and I just did a simple volume level uh, just so I could get the balance set for this uh, mix. Um, I, I am mixing this in stereo right now. If uh, I was doing this for, I know I'm preparing a project for a full concert band and I would only mix down my track in mono because uh, that's going to be sent in to somebody else and they're going to put all the tracks of all the instruments together. And so um, 
we definitely want that just to be a mono track to make it easier for the mixer to, to put that all together. But that's the basics of doing a multi-track project in Audacity. So yeah, just to give you the idea of mixing uh, with Audacity, uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to uh, export the file, okay? We wanna save our project and that's gonna save it as an Audacity project, but we need to export it so that we can share it with other people. Um, when you export as MP3, typically uh, if you're gonna share it uh, through Dropbox and it's not going to be for, record further with other things, you would want to save it as an MP3. But if you are sending this to like collaborate with other people online, uh, you want to save it as a WAV file. Uh, AUG is a different form of uh, file. It's less uh, uh, less common than WAV, but it it's um, it is it's like lossless compression, I believe. So it's a little smaller. The WAV files are larger in size, but there's no loss. Uh, the AUG files are a little smaller in size. Uh, but it is a lossly a lossless format of uh, compression, so it's pretty good actually. And then of course MP3s, those are there's a lot of audio loss in those streams, I and mean, you can really hear a difference if you record something and then listen to a wave playback versus if you transcode it to MP3. You're going to hear you, you know you can hear a difference in the in the sound quality, so it is a big difference. So uh, if you're going to further collaborate, uh, send the track in as a wave file. So I'm going to export as a wave. And um, I think, yeah, so we can select which kind of version we have. M uh, WMA, that's a Windows format. Um, I think, I don't know if it does AAC. Okay, so M M P M 4 a uh, AAC, those are, I think AAC is the Apple audio codec, I think. And that is lossless. No, it is lossy, but uh, uh, it's, we're, we're kind of getting away from these now. It You know, 20 years ago, MP3 were, were the things, uh, but uh Flack is another one that's a that's a, a lossless audio codec, um, yeah. And then MP3. I know for Audacity also, if you want to do MP3, you have to in, uh, install the lame MP3 encoder separately from the the file. So you, there's plenty of good videos online to, to show you how to do that. Um, but then of course, what bit format do we want? Well, typically 16 bit is fine, um, unless unless the person's requesting something higher, 32 or 24. You know, for the most part, we're going to have 16 bit recordings so it's fine to leave them in, encoded at that level and uh so that's what we're gonna do now i don't think i have a choice to record in uh to, or to mix it into a mono track only i think it's going to automatically do a tr um yeah ex it's only going to export as one stereo file i did have this set up in stereo so that's fine um but uh if you just set it if everything's mono it'll record a stereo track and then like if i was Comp I'm compositing a product project from other people. I would just take one of their tracks. I would split the audio track into into left and right, and just take one of the sides and put that in the in the project, so that I only have one uh, one channel to deal with with the recordings. Um, this is going to pop up this um this uh, box here, which is for uh, metadata. So I could put my name and the track title. Of course, is Oh Susanna. Uh, quarantine 2020. Uh, I've done a couple of tracks already, but I'll call this track number three. Uh, obviously, we're in 2020. Uh, genre is folk. And my comments are uh, trapped at home. Okay. Okay, so uh, you don't have to do all that other stuff, but um, I, especially when you're doing encoding with MP3, when you put all the data in, it will get attached with the MP3 file. Um, Wave doesn't really have the ability to store metadata typically, so I don't think that even if I even though I typed that in at this point, I don't think that would have done anything with the Wave file because typically the Wave file does not uh, contain any metadata. Metadata, but now I, I have that track uh, exported as its own file so i could import it into other software if i wanted to do a few other things with it um but at this point you know if i was going to send this into another person to work with then you know we've got the nice click track um not that the click track's present in that mix down we just did but there's some um we call this uh roll uh pre-roll right here pre-roll so that there's there's some dead empty space before the playing and, and the, the singing starts. So if we wanted to add an introduction, we have some space to do that and uh, they can adjust the uh, file as they need to in, in the next project. But that's pretty much the start to finish of uh, doing a mix uh, of a multi-track project in Audacity. I know this is very basic and not professional, 
Uh, I certainly would want to run these through some compression and do some equalization to make the mix sound a little bit better because, like, you know, the guitar sounds kind of muddy, um, and I'd like to get a little bit more shimmer out of the um, ukulele track and a little bit uh, muddiness out of my vocal track. But again, this is just a basic um, thing I did so you can see how to do multiple tracks. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little series, and I hope to see you again in the future. Bye-bye.